Microsoft Excel has two important functions. These are wrap rows and wrap calls functions. These functions allow users to convert large data sets into more manageable units, thus making it easier for the users to manipulate, analyze, and visualize the data. In this video, let's look at how and when we can use the wrap rows and wrap calls functions in Microsoft Excel. So first, let's look at the wrap rows function. So sometimes you import data from external sources or databases and the data is like this. For example, here we have this name in the first row, then we have the contact number of the person, then email ID. Then again, the name is repeated, name, contact number, email ID, again, name, contact number, email ID, so on and so forth. So we often encounter these scenarios, these situations, and we observe that the data is not organized properly, but yes, there is some structure in the data like here. You have these three rows, then again, these three rows, name, contact, email ID. So there is this structure in the data. So you want to convert the data into a proper structure in a proper format like I have here, name, contact number and email ID. So how can you do it? Let's delete this here. So you can achieve the result by using the wrap rows function, wrap rows. So what the wrap rows function does is that it takes a vector. The vector is this, in this case, this single column. Then we have to give it a value that after how many cells we have to break the row. Here in this case, it will be three because we have three values, name, contact number, in, and email ID. So after three values, there should be a new row. So we will input three here. Then for pad width, pad width is a value which we input in case there are some remaining cells in which we don't have any values. So for the time being, we will pad with an empty value, close the parenthesis, hit enter on the keyboard, so here you have these values, name, contact number, and email ID. Now let's look at another situation, another scenario. Here also we have this data, we have imported it from an external source. It's a response, survey response. You have this respondent ID, age, then location, question one, question two. You can notice here that the entire data is in a single single row. Here you have this respondent ID, then age, then location, response to question one, response to question two, then again, respondent ID, respondent age. So there is a structure in this data, but the problem is that the entire data is in a single row. Now, how can we convert this data into a two-dimensional array in a proper structure. Again, we will use the wrap rows function. The vector will be this entire row here. Then wrap count. Wrap count is the number of values after which you want to create a new row. So the wrap count here will be one, two, three, four, five because there are these five values after which a new row starts. So we'll input a five here. For pad with, we'll pad with an empty string, close the parenthesis, hit enter on the keyboard. So here you have this proper structure of the data. Let's make it bold here. So you have the respondent ID, then age, location, response to question one, response to question two, so this is how you can use the wrap rows function. Now let's take a look at the wrap calls function. So here you have these products. Then you have product IDs here. Then you have the price of products. As you notice here, there is a structure in this data. The data is in a single column. Let's delete this here. So you have this product, name of products, then product IDs here, then you have the price of these products. The problem here is that 
the entire data is in a single column but there is this structure the product ID for chocolate bars is this then product ID for potato chips is this similarly you have the price in a proper sequence but the entire data is in a single column now to convert this data into a two-dimensional array with a proper structure you will use the wrap calls function the first parameter for the wrap calls is the vector the vector is this single column then wrap count wrap count is the number of cells after which you want to create a new column since there are 10 products so wrap count will be 10 so after 10 values after 10 cells a new column will start for paired with again we will pad it with an empty string because in case at the end of this array if some cells are remain empty those cells will be padded with this empty string close the parenthesis hit enter on the keyboard so here you have these values the single column is converted into a two dimensional array with a proper structure because as because there was a structure after the product names there was product ids then there were product prices of the products with a proper sequence so we have converted that data properly into a two dimensional array now this two dimensional array is easier to work with it is more easy to visualize and more easy to work with the data so i hope this video was helpful if you like the video please give it a thumbs up keep supporting subscribe the channel thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video